No. All right. Let's. Uh, can you guess what we're we're gonna we're gonna move on to today? We're gonna learn some new derivatives. Um, so a couple new functions. Um, maybe you can guess. Maybe, maybe maybe you can guess from the part B of the warm up here. Yeah. So we'd like to talk about exponential and log derivatives a little bit today. And the first thing you did was estimate the slope at zero. And if you guessed one, then you were right. Uh, you could also do n derivative on your calculator to confirm that that's true. Um, so let's just take that to be a, a fact for now. Um, and I'll, I'll, uh, there is a little logical nuance that I'll introduce to in a minute here. So if we assume this to be true, then by the definition of the derivative, this is what I guess this is a more technical way to state what you just claimed. If you claim that the slope at zero is one. Isn't this what you're claiming? This is just the definition of the derivative, but instead of x plus h and x here for 0 plus h and 0, we have, we have like plugged in at 0. This is the derivative, the definition of the derivative applied to e to the x with 0 plugged in for x. Yeah? So that's, I just want to make sure you're clear. If, if, if this is what you claim, then this is actually the more precise way to say that what you claim. Okay. So now I think we're finally ready. If you take, if again, if you assume that's true, we're ready to actually compute the derivative of e to the x in general for and find a general formula. So by the definition of the derivative, we have this. Again, that's kind of like what we had up here, but only with zeros, with x's down. Okay. And then using properties of exponents, we can do that. Right? So you, I didn't do much. I didn't do much. And then it's just irresistible to factor out an e to the x. Keep in mind that you can always factor anything out of a limit that doesn't involve the variable in the limit, right? If we've, if we've got e to the x, we can actually factor that out of the, um, out of the limit. Okay. Um, so, and what did we say this limit is? Again, if we assume this limit, we started by making this assum assumption. We just need to resolve this limit, which involves no x's at all. So apparently, at the very least, at, at the very least, you realize that e to the x, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x times some constant. But what did we what did we start by thinking that that constant was? Huh? I mean, right here, this is the same. This limit right here. Do you recognize it? It's the same thing as this. I just didn't have a zero here. What do we say it is? Apparently, I mean, if, if we take everyone's claim that this is 1, then I think we have 1, and I think the derivative is, is itself. So we have the following, like I said here, down at the bottom, we have the following somewhat breathtaking result, that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Now let me make one note about some logic here, because you might be thinking, well, that's a big assumption to make. Well, in, in, in some ways, and in fact this is a, a great way to do this, um, there is a number that makes this true. And let, maybe we make that our definition of e. The number that does this for us, that makes this true, right? So that's actually a, a, a one way to, to solve this issue, is to be like, let's let e be that very special number that happens to make this limit be one, right? That would be one way to, one way to say that. And if that's true, if we define e that way, then then of course everything else falls into place if that's the definition of e. Yeah. So are all the higher order derivatives of e Yeah, the next follow-up question should be like, ready for a really hard problem? What's the 5,000th derivative of e to the x? And you would be right to say e to the x, yeah. So that's a pretty powerful thing to, to recognize. There's only other one other somewhat trivial function that has that property, and that's y equals zero. So. This is the only non-trivial function that has this property, that its derivative is itself. So this is so remarkable, it deserves another slide. I have this quote up. Oh, that's, no, I think I have to take that down. One of my quotes at one point, I had this up. Um, so yeah, there's a phoenix to, who has not been amazed to learn that the function y equals e to the x, like a phoenix rising from its ashes, is its own derivative. You can't, can't keep it down. Keep taking derivatives. With polynomials, you, you eventually destroy them, right, by taking them to zero after 
uh, n plus one derivatives of a n degree polynomial, you get to zero. Um, by the way, that's a that's a that's a pretty image of a phoenix, isn't it? You know the legend. Of the I assume you know what a phoenix is all about. Um, this is Francois. I thought there we go. That's an equally startling image. <laughs> there he is. There's Francois. Okay, who <laughs> made that quote? Let's just let's just make that distinction there. Okay. Um, all right, let's play around with this. Uh, this, is, this is a pretty a remarkable property. Uh, so let's give some of these a try. I'll give you a minute to just give them a try first. See if you can really think hard about what does this mean for my life now? Through it, you definitely do. When you're done, you don't give that back to me, right? When you're done. Okay, that wasn't like a gift, but that's like my original chase now. Yeah, right away we have the chain rule to deal with, don't we? someone on A. I'm going to take just volunteers on all of these, um, just because these are this is all kind of new to us. Uh, you want to do A, John? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, you can tell me, or if you want to come up, you can. Um, well, careful. I, I really like what you're about to say there. I like the pi. It's definitely a pi. Um, but what is the derivative of e to the u? What's the derivative of e to the u with respect to x? The answer is e to the u times the u dx, isn't it? Right? The chain rule is always with us, isn't it? So, in fact, Actually, the rule on the last slide, down here, this rule is actually, I think, it maybe even in your book, in lots of textbooks, if not ours, the rule is actually given this way, right? Just like, in fact, a lot of the derivative rules you'll see, I think, in our textbook or other textbooks, are often given with the chain rule, just to remind you that, like, the chain rule is always, always there, okay? So, all right. So, does someone want to complete this? I like the pi, Rebecca. E to the pi x. Agree? Why? Well, because, well, look at, look at what we said here. E to the f of x is, the derivative of that is just e to the f of x. And then all you have to do at the end is multiply by the derivative of f of x, which in this case is just pi. Yeah, we're done. So far, so good? Maybe you need some more time on these, or are we ready to do one of these? Do you want that one, Josh? I think that's a great idea, since it's a product. I said, first up, negative e to the x is equal to square x. Plus, because in x, e to the x. Yeah. I guess you could factor that. You could factor out e to the x, if one wanted to. Let's give, do people need another second to do the last one here? Right. 
I mean, I intentionally introduced all sorts of crazy things happening. I needed, a chain I needed to have a chain rule and another chain rule and a quotient rule. I just needed to do that. more rules that you already know, but in this form. How are we doing? I mean, this is not, I didn't mean this to be a nice problem, I just thought, good, good, good workout for you, I don't know. All right. Oh, that's gonna go. You check me too. I haven't actually done it. I just wrote the problem. And then... There we go. So far, so good. Bottom. What's the derivative of the top? D sine e to the sine x. Yeah, times cosine x. Minus top. Oh. Times the derivative of the bottom, which is something messy, but what is it? One half. One minus two x. Or two. What'd you say? Uh, by the way, there is clearly there's a domain issue on this. We, the, so there's some. There's only some. There's some domain for this. I don't know what it is. <laughs> we can figure it out. Actually, I think I can figure it out. Uh, it needs to be, what, x is between 0 and 1 or something like that? I think, I don't know. I think is what the domain needs to be actually for this. But whatever, let's not, let's not issue with it. deal with that. Um, all right. Uh, so, that, I mean, there it is. If you want, we, should, we can clean it up a little bit for sure. But, um, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know that we can clean it up too much, actually. You might, yeah. Let's just leave it. Let's just leave that right there. Okay. All right. Uh, theoretically, one could like do something else with it, but I think, yeah, we could factor out an e to the sine x, maybe. But that's, yeah, not too much more, I guess. All right. Let's. I think it's a natural question to ask: What's the derivative in general of like three to the x or, or whatever to the x? So uh, I'm gonna rewrite a to the x. In fact, almost the entire way along the way here is like your pre-calc skills coming into play. So uh, first, can you just agree with me that this is true? Can I rewrite? Again, no calculus has happened here. Just pre-calc. Why does that work? Well, because e to the x and ln x are inverse functions. So I'm, I'm just going to use that property to rewrite this this way. You could easily just rewrite it back if you wanted, but trust me that this is good, a good choice. Using another another property that you might remember from pre-calculus. You see why I can rewrite it this way? Again, notice everything's happening pre-calculus style, inside the parentheses here. There's no, no derivatives being taken at all, yet. So far, so good? Already, you should kind of see where I'm going with this. Because right now, what is A, by the way? Is A like something? In practice, A is a constant, isn't it? Yeah. So what do we have right now? Well, we have E to the x times a constant. We've already done that today, haven't we? Didn't we just do e to the pi x a minute ago? I think that taking the derivative of this should be as simple as that. What was the derivative of e to the pi x? I just need to remember. Pi, are you sure? 
Okay, if you're really feeling good about that, then what should the derivative of this be? Well, it should be e to the x ln a times ln a, right? So it's e to the x ln a times the derivative of x ln a, which is, uh, sorry, I did it. You, there you go, times ln a, right? Isn't that what you did here? There you go. So it's the derivative of e to the x ln a is e to the x ln a. Oh, wait, chain rule, times ln a. Okay, so that, that should feel as, exactly as familiar as this did. If you really like this, if you're feeling good about this, then I require that you feel fam feel good about this. Yeah, Nick. I mean, u, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, so if, if this was u, this would be e to the u, and the derivative of e to the u would be just the same thing, e to the u. Oh, wait, times whatever the derivative of u is. In this case, the derivative of u is ln. So yes, absolutely, you could write that way. Now, there's a little more I'd like to do here, though. What is this again? E to the x ln a? Can we just remember, go back in time and remember what that actually was? Oh, yeah, that's right. It's a to the x. So that's a nice, there it is. I mean, now we have a nice rule for the derivative of a to the x. It's a to the x ln a. And now I know this is backwards logic here. We use the derivative of e to the x to derive this, right? But say someone handed you this and you didn't know the derivative of e to the x. What would the derivative of e to the x be? Well, it would be e to the x times ln e, which is 1. OK, so actually, it even works for e to the x if you like. Um, so this is the, 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 the most general way we can state the result. So let's practice doing the problem with this new skill. Time to come up with the two things you need, right? Uh, we have a point. What is it? 5, 32. There it is, x and y. And then we also need the slope at that point. So that is y prime of 5. So maybe we need y prime first. What is y prime after this discussion? 2 to the x. Ln2. So if we plug in 5, we get 32 ln2. All right, I think we're ready to go then. The tangent line is what we want, not the normal. So we get y equals 32 plus 32 ln2 times x minus 5. Is that what it is? Yeah. Just two. By the way, the slope at x equals five is fairly steep. We should say, right? Um, that's that's okay. We expected it to be steep. That's all right. Is that right? Find the equation. We we're supposed to find the actual equation and the tangent line. I guess. That's all right. uh, let's try a couple more, and maybe this is where we'll we'll finish here today. Just trying a few more. I've got um. I've got some other things in here too. Uh, some other tricks along the way. Um, so yeah, ooh, now we've got a chain rule involved. Looks like three to two x. So where do we get there? that? 
maybe I should write the derivative of a to the u again in terms of u this time, right? It's a to the u ln a times du dx, right? There's the rule again, this time using the chain rule as well there, right? Who wants this one? Jennifer, you want that one? Oh, I was just... All right, you've raised your hand. I was just... It's a very interesting way to raise your hand, but you did raise your hand. Steven wants this one? All right. So that 3 the power of the next. Okay. Times 2 the length. Times... Yeah, times ln3 times another 2. I'm with you. Um, yeah, because we need to multiply. I'm just I'm trying to format it like I did up here. You, that's the chain rule, right? So I think that works. Um, there is another way to do this problem. Would you like to suggest another way? Using some pre-calculus knowledge? Before you start, it would be great to, to not have to think any harder than we need to. Uh, yeah, Nicholas? Log 3? Um, I'm thinking of something a little bit different here. What, there's a, a rewrite on the original problem that I can, I can use. Charlotte, you're fearful, but go ahead. Is it, is it just like 3 to the x times 3 to the x? Uh, well, not the answer, but you can rewrite it. Yeah, so what is that? What is 3 to the x times 3 to the x? There's like a really simple way to write that, actually. Yeah, what is it? 3 to the x. Yeah, it's, that's right. It's 9 to the x, isn't it? Yeah. So wait, does that mean that the solution to this doesn't require the chain rule? That you could just write it this way? 9 to the x, ln 9? Is that right? Justify why these two answers are both right. Can you? This is still 9 to the x for reasons we talked about. And ln 3 times 2 is ln 9? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Cool. So, you know, save yourself some work if you can on, on these if you. I don't have anything to tell you there, though. Just do it. Right. Down here we're finding y double prime, right? That's what I'm asking. You. Anyone have a helpful anyone have a helpful rewrite for B down here? Huh? What is it? Yeah, six to the x would make your life a lot easier, wouldn't it? I mean otherwise you're doing a product rule, then you have to do it again, it would be messy. Yeah. Yeah, do you remember this property? A, B, to the X is equal to A to the X, B to the X? Yeah. And that'll make you taking two derivatives a lot easier, right? Yes. All right, well, I, 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 I'm, just, I'm getting the message that class is over, so um, I guess so. Everyone starts giving up out of their seat, wandering around. I kind of know. It's fine. I mean, I'm not hurt at all. It's fine. It's fine. Um, 